Hey guys, Argon Templar here with a reactionary review of Gattaca. Now I know there's a bunch of other movies you probably want me to do a review of instead, uh, but I kind of pick these based on when I have a good idea for them. Like I know a lot of people want the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises one, uh, but it's for stuff like that I really want to have something solid because there's movies kind of like Gattaca or Dracula Untold where I can do a reactionary review pretty quick and uh, well not really quick but I mean it's only like one or two major issues to deal with so I can focus a bit more on the story uh, for something like Dark Knight there's just so much stuff to cover and so many dimensions to it I kind of I kind of just um, really want to have a good handle on it so I kind of think about it over time but I'm, uh, I digress. So Gattaca is a movie I have very mixed feelings about. Um, when I saw this movie back in grade 10, I, um, or no, I think it was grade 11. Yes, grade 11 when I took uh, high school uh, senior biology. Uh, honestly, if I had to go back and read, I have taken biology as a career path. Uh, I find it very fascinating, the science of life as it were. Um, I just was never very good at uh, chemical formulations. Um, I found adding those formulas just <sighs> extremely difficult. Uh, I probably could do it now, but too late. Anyways, so on that topic, yeah, I saw the movie and it really repulsed me and it disturbed me. Uh, but as time goes on and I kind of moved further to the right, I kind of now have a lot more mixed feelings about this film. Because on one hand, if we're going to um, talk about the realities of racial differentiation, of IQ scores, of biological differences between male and female, of uh, differences even between within people of the same race, uh, like the Japanese versus the Chinese, or the um, French versus the Spanish or something, uh, then we have to kind of acknowledge how important um, genetics are and kind of um, what within uh, different humans, uh, how big a role it plays. I mean, um, as I kind of get older, I learn more and more that personality is strongly influenced by genetics. And to some extent, this is natural. Um, there's intended to be kind of a leadership cast, a worker cast, etc. And to some extent, they're genetically programmed for it. Like you have higher IQ, more introverted, thoughtful, self-reflective people who are kind of meant to be a leadership cast. Then you have very kind of extroverted, um, sociable people who don't really have higher ambitions. And I'm not saying all extroverts are like this, but just for example, um, who are probably more suited to be a working class. They enjoy physical labor. Like I would bulk at doing 50 hours of physical labor a week, but I know people who enjoy it. And you have to understand that these people are different and just some people like different things. I mean, if, if I had a lifetime of, of leisure, I would probably not really be leisure, uh, be leisure most of the time. I'd be writing books, I'd be making higher quality videos, um, I'd just be doing all kinds of stuff. I'd probably read like 200 books a year, I'd probably go get a bunch of other degrees, try, maybe try to invent something. I'd do something like productive with my time. Um, as for plebs, I mean, who knows? Um, and I, I don't mean plebs in a negative way even, because society takes all kinds of different classes and different people. Um, but that all being said, that kind of leads into this. Um, sometimes I, I kind of give a bit of background politically and kind of thematically. So, uh, Gattaca takes place in the not too in the not too distant future. Some might say next Sunday AD. Uh, some might take say the year three thousand. It's hard to tell, really. So within this future uh, society, genetic engineering has become extremely commonplace. And um, DNA is the primary role in society. Uh, social class is based on that. It's not based on wealth. It's not based on um, race anymore, which I find is kind of interesting. Um, I hear this, this talked about a lot in kind of... Um, white nationalist circles, this idea that we should embrace genetic engineering. Uh, I know, I, th I forget who it was, someone was, was telling me that um, if genetic engineering's not around in time to make sure my kids are blonde hair and blue eyed, um, I should just sterilize myself. 
um, so that my dark hair, dark eyed genes will never be passed on. Um, so a lot of them like have these fantasies about genetically engineering their kids to remove like the 0.5% Jewish blood or whatever. It's I, I find it kind of crazy myself, but um, whatever, people get angry at me for saying that. Um, so yeah, so um, in this, this future world, we have um, an almost uh, total elimination of physical and genetic dysfunctions, which I think is a good thing. Um, people have much longer lifespans, people are much stronger, people are much smarter than they used to be. At the same time though, uh, there kind of is a social class system based on uh, how prominent your genetics are and people are kind of genetically designed for certain roles in life and we kind of have a, a society in which the vast majority of the people are serfs and um, a small genetically at least it's, it's hard to tell in the movie um, a small genetically superior elite rules over uh, which is to some extent how society classically worked with the nobility possessing certain bred genetic advantages, uh, but there's no sense of kind of noblesse oblige. Uh, there's no real sense that this has been given to them by God or anything. Uh, this is a scientific dictatorship. Uh, there's, it's, it's considered completely natural that they should rule over, but there's no higher moral sense. Uh, they are in essence Nietzsche's Ubermensch. Uh, they are beyond morality. They are beyond good or evil. Um, traditionally, people who had kind of attained that would find an ideal, be it religious or something, to kind of submit themselves to, realizing that that's the step beyond nihilism. But this is a society that really hasn't embraced that, and so you have a serf population with no rights who can basically are basically treated like cattle, and a genetic elite. So the main character is one of the is a human who is born uh, the natural way. Um, Ethan Hawke's character, uh, aka Vincent, is born between two parents who um, uh, ha have him born and he's given a life expectancy of 30 years because of a, a heart defect and a couple other um, physical dysfunctions. So he's given a life expectancy of 30 years and he's incapable of getting pretty much any job. Uh, jobs are not Interviews uh, are based solely on genetics. Um, people test your genetics and that determines whether or not your IQ and temperament is conducive to it. And this is kind of something I have mixed feelings about. Because on one level, this would eliminate a lot of the bullshit. This would eliminate uh, affirmative action based on race, on um, male-female. Uh, and this would also eliminate all the bullshit of recruiting, where it's just a big game... Uh, where people lie to you, where um, human resources departments just fuck you over even when you're qualified because they're run by um, the um, the HR bitches as whatchamacallit calls them, as Aaron clearly calls them. Um, yeah, so like, so that would eliminate all that. And it would probably, because I, I do, and this isn't bragging, this is just when I was tested, I do have a very high IQ. Uh, particularly a high verbal IQ. Um, so I probably, this would probably be beneficial to me, even though I have some other things like a tendency towards uh, being overweight. Uh, this, this would be personally probably advantageous to me if I was trying to get a, a job where I had to use my mind in a non-physical setting. I would also really make sure society is optimal. Uh, I actually wouldn't really be against it. I kind of feel like a better society would be one where uh, we're screened at a young age to um, uh, kind of determine what we're good for and kind of gradually uh, over school streamed into that. Uh, obviously, I do think people should have a right to choose, but I think overall most people want kind of like how people have a natural desire to be around their their own like people of the same ethnic and racial group uh people also kind of have a desire to fulfill what their um kind of genetics and upbringing um predispose them towards so i i kind of think this has some merit the problem is when it's combined with genetic engineering uh to create a race of supermen and we'll talk about the problem with that later um 
So he keeps attempting to get a job. Uh, he has a lifelong dream to become an astronaut. Now this is an interesting question, because on one hand it's completely reasonable to discriminate against him. Uh, he has a major heart defect. Um, if he... Um, there's a good chance that uh, if the spaceship takes off, the G-forces could make him have a heart attack. Uh, there's a good chance he'll die on the mission. And they're investing billions of dollars in these space programs. So you think they should have the right to kind of pick whoever they want to send on these spaceships. I mean, this isn't just some, like, dumb marketing job. This is, like, the future of humanity in space. Um... So, there, it's basically kind of this whole, you can be whatever you want mentality, which I disagree with. Uh, people can't be anything they want. Uh, some people are just not dis predisposed towards it. And I kind of think as a society, we should kind of, ironically enough, embrace this diversity. Uh, to me, that was kind of the idea of fascism, was that uh, society is unequal, people belong to different social classes, uh, but ultimately, the different social classes and kind of the different um, groups within society should work together for the good, the collective good of the nation, uh, which is kind of the difference between it and communism. It's it's collectivism, but it's right wing collectivism, if you will. So yeah, um, the guy certainly has the IQ to be a um, astronaut, but I, I don't really think he he has he's physically fit enough and he's physically capable. So he works extremely hard, he studies like crazy, he works out like crazy. Uh, he can't get a job though as an astronaut because of his genetic code. So he assumes the identity of Jerome, played by Jew Law, who is a former swimming star. I don't know, it's vague as to where he swam, we're just going to say the Olympics because that's the easiest one. So um, he has the greatest genetic profile of anyone living, a uh, life expectancy which is implied to be hundreds of years. Uh, virtually invincible, etc. Uh, he only won a silver medal, though, at the Olympics. And he attempted to commit suicide by jumping in front of a truck. Um, because he, he failed. Uh, his entire existence and identity was based on being the Ubermenscht, uh, on being a genetic uh, superior being, and he could not figure out how to deal with the, the loss of identity and the angst that came from losing. Uh, so he is given all kinds of interesting stuff like um, they do blood tests to check your genetic code and verify your identity by having this little needle that takes a, a, a drop of blood from your finger so he wears these kind of like uh, artificial fingertips uh, that match Jerome's and that take the blood from them uh, he wears a bag uh, attached to his um, like a um, penis, I guess, that squirts Jerome's uh, urine in whenever he's doing a test. Um, they, um, he puts Jerome's hair follicles in his, um, and skin cells into his hair. He does all kinds of interesting stuff, like on his keyboard, he, um, he takes, like, uh, kind of, this is kind of gross, but like skin uh, that's fallen off of Jerome, and he, like, uh, sprinkles it on there. Uh, every day he scrapes off he all the excess skin cells and all the excess hair um, so that they won't be able to accidentally pick up his genetic influence. Um, so he becomes what's called a borrowed ladder, which is a reference to the fact that uh, genetic code kind of looks like a ladder. Um, so he was once a, um, a an object of scorn and pity. But now it's, um, he's a, a fraud. Um, he would only be uh, subject to fines, but uh, he is a heretic against the new social order and someone would probably assassinate him if his identity was ever discovered. Um, actually, what's kind of interesting um, is they call people degenerates in this movie. Uh, you're a, a degenerate uh, if you're of inferior genetic stock. Uh, another term is invalid versus a villain. Um, so the remainder of kind of the unmodified humanity, as I said, lives surf lives. And basically that's all he was really uh, qualified for. Uh, let's see here. Um, so yeah, so he's a world ladder, uh, etc. Uh, with Jerome's impressive genetic profile, he easily gains access to the Galatica 
Gattaca Aerospace Corporation, uh, which is kind of the successor to NASA, who is planning a um, a flight to the to Titan, uh, as it is considered to be the best one of the best hopes of colonization within the solar system. How exactly? I don't know. Maybe with nuclear generators to keep the planet warm. Uh, I don't know. Um, so yeah. So the test, uh, the interview consists entirely of uh, genetic screening. He passes using Jerome's DNA and instantly gets the job. Uh, so he becomes the company's a celestial um, navigator. Um, so it's kind of interesting because because he can do that because he's just studied his entire life for it. Um, but when they're doing physical tests and stuff, he has to take extreme measures like recording Jerome's heartbeat and then playing it back when they're like monitoring him and stuff like that. So um, he gets to become a um, uh, an employee at the company. Uh, he falls in love with uh, his co-worker. Irene, who's paid by played by Uma Thurman, it's kind of interesting because it's standard procedure now, um, when you're dating someone to take a gene sample to a um, kind of like a publicly available uh, person who will analyze it and determine if they're a good match. Uh, it's not based on wealth or race anymore. It's based on whether or not the person has a superior genetic profile, and you get married based on that. Um, so yeah, he's chosen to be the navigator on the flight to Titan. Um, however, during that, the, um, the mission director is murdered and they find a piece of Vincent's uh, invalid DNA in the form of an eyelash. Uh, so the presence of this unexpected DNA attracts the attention of, peop of the police and Vincent has to evade the ever-increasing security. Uh, as the mission launch date approaches. Um, so they think that Vincent killed the mission director. Uh, so after a number of close calls, um, it turns out that the director is arrested for murder uh, by the lead detective. The director reveals that he murdered the mission director in order to buy time for the mission to launch. Um, because the mission director wanted to abort... Um, uh, sorry, the um, the one the guy who was killed wanted to abort it. Uh, the mission director wanted to go through because the launch windows uh, about a week once every seventy years, um, and um, he he confesses to it when they reveal it's too late to stop the launch. Um, however, just as Vincent appears to be in the clear, he is confronted by one of the d detectives, who is revealed as Vincent's estranged brother Anton. Anton tries to convince Vincent to go with him for protection before Vincent is found out. However, it soon becomes apparent that Anton is acting more out of insecurity and is more convinced with how Vincent had managed to get better, uh, better become better off than him despite his supposed genetic uh, superiority. Um, yeah, so, yeah, his brother was... was um, genetically altered where Vincent wasn't and yet Vincent is uh, a successful astronaut who's going to become one of the first people to land on the on Titan um so they um uh they settle it with a swimming competition ironically enough given uh Jerome's presence um so um one time when they were younger Vincent won and Vincent manages to beat his brother once again and saves him from drowning as his brother overexhausts himself. Uh, this is simply because his brother, in an attempt to beat him, refused to save any strength to swim back. Uh, he's willing to um, uh, risk everything to succeed. So his brother is worried about preserving. Okay, uh, okay, let's see here. His brother is worried about testing his true limits. How are you, so his brother remarks, Vincent, how are you doing this, Vincent? How have you done any of this? We have to go back. It's too late for that. Okay, let's see here. Uh, as the day of the launch finally arrives, Jerome bids Vincent farewell and says that he intends to travel too. He reveals that he has stored um, enough genetic samples to last Vincent for two times. Overwhelmed, Vincent thanks Jerome for lending him the identity that has allowed him to su succeed at Gattaca. Uh, Jerome replies that, however, that he, it, that it is he who should be grateful since Vincent 
lent Jerome his dreams. So he lent um, Vincent his genetic material, but he lent v Jerome his dreams, and Vincent's stories provided Jerome a reason for living. Um, so let's see here. As Vincent moves through the Gattaca complex to the launch site, he is stopped for um, an unexpected uh, uh, DNA test. So this is kind of the final countdown, as it were. Um, so Vincent agrees to take the test, even though he has none of Jerome's genetic material to hide his identity. Uh, the test uncovers Vincent's inv invalid status, and the um, doctor reveals that he has known Vincent's true identity all along, saying for future reference, uh, right-handed men don't hold with their left. Just one of those things because whenever he took urine tests, he, he held his penis with his left hand. Um, uh, so the doctor allows him to proceed regardless and alters the test results, uh, confessing that his unaltered son uh, admires Vincent and wants to be an astronaut just like him, but he is already ruled out. Uh, as the shuttle lifts off, um, Jerome is shown committing suicide inside the home sir, uh, incinerator wearing his silver medal, which turns gold in the flames. So the story is, is in essence about um, uh, Jerome failing to succeed despite having every advantage, while the um, imperfect Vincent transcends his deficiencies through the force of will and spirit. A milder version of the disorder that affects Vincent pre prevents Irene from taking part in spaceflight. Uh, so let's see here. Um, so then a, a coda cut from the final film uh, lists various people who have succeeded despite genetic uh, deficiencies and would be excluded from the modern society of Gattaca. So what can be said about Gattaca? Um, I think ultimately it's, it's an issue that I'm kind of divided on. Um, kind of my philosophical traditionalist and Catholic side uh, rejects this idea as abhorrent, but I guess my more rational side uh, views this as kind of maybe something to look into. Um, I guess my ultimate view of this is I kind of feel that genetic engineering can be used for um, uh, removing genetic defects and curing diseases, but I think it's a very dangerous path to walk down if we start giving people super strength, super intelligence, and extended lifespan. Uh, firstly, um, as we've seen throughout history, these things can backfire. Uh, I, I'm not confident scientists know what they're doing, and I think this could lead to some very bad, unforeseen consequences, uh, perhaps can creating a, uh, a group of people who are mentally unbalanced, um, a group of people who, well, uh, genetically superior in most ways, uh, might have some other set of defects. I'm not really confident that scientists do or will in the foreseeable future know what they're doing enough to do this reliably without a severe risk of side effects. Um, also, my, my biggest concern though is it violates kind of the basic human equality. Um, to some extent I kind of view um, God giving humanity death as being an act of supreme mercy. Um, it ensures that no one will um, ever live forever, um, which to some extent is kind of a plus, because we have people like Jerome who uh, really do need natural death um, because they've absorbed too much pain over the course of their lives. And if, if they are basically immortal um, and they, they don't die a natural death, then they'll eventually succumb to suicide, which is a grave um, sin in, in a, a horrible thing for a society where most of the population has to commit suicide to escape life. Uh, more importantly though, um, I don't really see how such a society could not lead to an even greater um, social stratification because throughout all history uh, humanity has had natural equality um, as defined by Thomas Hobbes. That is everybody has the ability to kill one another. Uh, granted, some people have better security, but in the end, we can all be struck down by disease, uh, genetic defects, uh, random chance like car accidents, etc. And while this, this ensures that um, the, the best people in society will face their fates, uh, often m way before their time, it also ensures that serial killers, tyrants, um, 
greedy billionaires, horrible politicians will also be limited. Kind of a core principle is all men are mortal and all things will pass. Um, it's a bit like the whole drone issue. Um, the creation of an army of drones will kind of overthrow a natural balance. Um, historically, the ability of um, tyrants to repress a society have been limited by the fact that um, they can only uh, that they have to depend on the compliance or um, uh, acquiescence of the population, uh, if not their outright support to maintain power. Drones ensure that a small cabal uh, can govern and repress the population uh, without any real popular support whatsoever. And the same thing might come out of this. Um, it'll create an upper class that is so superior to the lower class. And people say, well, there'll be widespread genetic engineering. Yes, but there'll always be people who can afford the better genetic engineering. Uh, I, d I don't believe that this will be available to everyone, at least not to the same degree. And you'll have a society where the elite basically live forever and are basically all powerful and the common people no longer possess their traditional right to revolt should conditions become intolerable. Uh, we could have a dictatorship, uh, well dictatorship is not a bad thing, but we could have a, a tyrannical sadistic government that lasts for all time. Imagine if Genghis Khan hadn't have been mortal. Imagine if Timur the Lane hadn't been mortal and he succeeded in his genocide of India. Imagine if Genghis Khan had conquered all the world. Uh, imagine if um, Stalin had lived forever and continued the Great Purges. Imagine if Mao had lived forever. Um, while this also ensures that the good leaders die, it also ensures that the bad people die. And it also ensures that um, humans live longer than they're kind of psychologically capable of living. Is life extension a good or bad thing? I, th I think it largely is a good thing, but I think it's an issue we have to be very careful about. And I don't think there's a willingness really to have these conversations. Uh, I think there's either kind of a knee-jerk reaction for or against. And if you'll excuse me for not being edgy and extreme enough, I think it's something we really need to have a nuanced conversation about. Uh, we have to determine the limits. We have to determine kind of the moral consequences of genetic engineering, um, transhumanism, etc. Um, which is kind of what the movie Transcendence did, albeit in a really shitty way, uh, where we had the pro, anti, and nuanced views of transhumanism. So that's the reaction review of Gattaca. I think I'm getting better at these. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Argon Templar signing out.